your radiance. I love that orange. Look at us with our orange and blue. It's quite. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the first time I met you was um, at your women's radio station. Yes. And where I came to speak about my album. And I was really grateful for that, you know, just to have an opportunity to talk about my debut album, which was Love and Prayer. It was a, it's a beautiful album, and, and I was very pleased to have you, actually, among the nominees of Future Classic Win Awards. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. It's, it, was, it was one of those things where you've just got to jump in and just take a risk, and you just don't know, and you never know what's going to be at the end of it, you know. Absolutely, but, yeah. But it was really, the team that I worked with were amazing. I couldn't have done it without any, any one person. And then coming on again for the London Song Festival with Nigel Foster. Such a fantastic character. I really loved Nigel and it was such a pleasure to have you as an extra guest. It was just special. Wow. And talk about the London um, uh, Song Festival. That was a super success, right? Yes, his that song festival has been a huge success. And the amount of work that Nigel does to go into, you know, the amount of detail that he puts into every single concert. You know, so anybody who's watching who hasn't heard of the Long London Song Festival, we'll make sure we put the the um, the details in the comments mm -hmm. because it is a very very successful festival and and the music that he 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 shows there is just wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just wonderful. Anyway, it's nine oh one. Good morning. I am Nadine Benjamin, the intuitive Verdi soprano. I am a certified NLP mind coach and I'm a certified high performance coach and a healer. But I'm also a professional opera singer and I love singing all around the world. And one of my absolute passions is connecting, championing and celebrating people. And this morning, oh wow, I'm here to celebrate the wonderful Stefania Passamonte. Stefania is the recipient of, st sorry, my apologies. Stefania is an international concert pianist, recording artist and radio presenter of her original program, Future Classic Women Awards, on the women's radio station in London. Stefania is the recipient of the 2020 Artist Vision Award, a once in a lifetime award bestowed by the Academia in recognition of her exceptional talent, originality, and vision in the field of music. Wow, we are so happy to have you on here today. Thank you. And as I normally, normally say, you know, if you, we are not psychiatrists or doctors, medical doctors or anything in any sense, we're just here to give you some development and support and any ideas of maybe waking up to your new day. But if you need that kind of help, please, please, please pick up the phone to someone. And if you know someone who's shy like that and needs that support, pick up the phone to them. Really, really important. Good morning, Lena. Lovely to see you here. Really lovely to see you. <laughs> so, Stefania. Oh, wow. What a woman. Can you... <laughs> Can you tell us about your women's radio station? Yes, absolutely. Well, the women's radio station, uh, it's a station dedicated to women, uh, to women well-being. And there is a series of different programs dedicated to women subject. Um, mm -hmm. Subject that might interest um, uh, women both uh, as um, a person that has mothers, has um, uh, professionals. Uh, so there is very many different aspects of uh, us as women. And uh, my program in particular is the one dedicated to classical music and to uh, search for the amazing uh, performing artist uh, a female performing artists that, that are currently um, taking over the world uh, with music <laughs> and the talent. So that's that's what I do. Oh, wow. uh, in my program, what we do on top of um, shining a light on the career, on the music that they recorded, so we have a chance to hear some um, songs from um, uh, um, tracks from their albums or performances, mm -hmm. live concerts. And we actually talk about the ups and downs of being a female um, uh, concert artist, mm -hmm. uh, opera singer, um, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, audience normally just see us uh, uh, smiling on stage, mm -hmm. uh, taking, you know, uh, the challenge of um, singing Verdi or uh, playing mm -hmm. Rachmaninoff, but mm -hmm. there is so many other aspects before and after you are on stage. Yes, yes, yes. 
Wow. So what made you get involved in the radio station? (laughs) That's a very long story, actually a funny story. So what happened, you know, as a concert pianist, I'm actually also a mother. And I was invited to go to the Grammys uh, in New York. And um, I was, it was all planned. My parents were supposed to come in London and take care of my little uh, girl. She was at the time Mm. just uh, three, uh, two and a half. So you can imagine you don't leave her for a week with anyone. And my mom, like three days before she was supposed to fly to London, she, she couldn't come. She fell sick. She had a very strong flu and so they couldn't come to London. So I phoned a friend of mine um, with what I was working on, Clara Schumann. She made a play on Clara Schumann. So she's an actress who can also play the piano. So I was helping her choosing the music. I was being the music director of the project. And uh, like two days before leaving, I said, you know, I got the hotel uh, booked, I uh, got the flight booked, uh, just come with me. She's like, I don't have a dress. I was like, I give you one of my dresses. Yeah. Yeah. So it was such a, a, a wild story. And so we went there and then, you know, what happened in New York, it was just incredible because of the terrorism. It was 60 years anniversary of the Grammys. So super extra security and then actually no security at all because we had to walk with the, with the uh, you know, red carpet dress. Uh, you couldn't go with the limousine. So you had to walk or to take a bus uh, from the hotel, but we were in another hotel, you know, well, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> so anyway, and so when we, she was invited to the women's radio station to talk yeah. about her play, she was previewing the, the play in London. Yeah. And we, we told the story, it was like one week after, it was yeah. just too much. And so they went crazy, like, how about you talk about classical music like that? You know, people don't talk about, you know, you only see the picture on the red carpet you don't know what's happening before or after you know it's just uh, fantastic yeah it's amazing that the the other world of being a musician that the window is yeah you're so right it's never as easy as just walking on stage <laughs> you know but plus you have to do social media you have to take this picture you have to smile and look yeah. beautiful <laughs> Yeah. When I actually, you know, so just to tell you, so there was this extra security. You couldn't take the um, uh, limousine. You couldn't go with the taxi. You could only take either you were in the, in the Marriott Hotel that was far yeah. away. But because I was supposed to be there with my husband, he was kind of thinking about honeymoon. So we had a super <laughs> cute hotel just behind, <laughs> just behind the, the the place where we had the the. Grammys yeah. and and so we thought you know we can just walk but one thing is to walk with my husband who stole two yeah. meters and I know he can protect me in case you know right and another thing is to be two girls <laughs> with this very long dress with the tail and the high heels and it was January you know it was end of That's January freezing. yeah absolutely and mm. uh, and and so they closed everything but Madison Square Garden tube station so while we were walking, so there were um, police with the mitra and the dogs, you know, with the machine guns. It was super scary if you look at it. Everything else was blocked. You couldn't, all the tube station nearby, you couldn't come out of those. But they went just under the Madison Square Garden was open. So we had to walk through all these you know, a big wave of people coming out of the tube and everybody saying, oh my gosh, you're going to the Grammys. Oh. Uh, and I forgot to mention, we received the emails just before that to say, be careful that there will be terrorists trying to oh steal God. your ticket so that they can go in oh the... God in the Grammys, you know, and maybe make a, an action. So we had police dressed up in the middle of the audience. So it was, you wouldn't see that, but there was all this crazy, scary thing. And we had to walk in the middle of just normal people saying, oh, you're going to the Grammys, bring me with you, come on. Oh, oh my God. But that's amazing. <laughs> I'm so, that's so wonderful. We've got Susan saying good morning and we've got Marjorie saying, hi Nadine, great to hear you and your guests infected. Just enthusiasm. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you, Madge. What, what a wonderful story. So you are also a recording artist. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Well, um, recording, it all started um, um, 11 years ago already. Gosh, time flies. And I had a friend who, who wanted to start the classical record label uh, um, next to his jazz and um, jazz and blues. Yeah. 
and he wanted me to take care of choosing a recording artist. So I would have been head of the classical side. And he says, you know, let's start with an album by you. I was just out of um, my graduation from the Col Normale in Paris. So I had fresh repertoire and I was like, oh, I'm ready, you know. I, <laughs> I, I love recording because it's something that will last. Yeah. and that people can hear anywhere in the world yeah. so and it was really the beginning of even before Spotify yeah. at the very beginning of Spotify and I remember I was gathering these fans from all around the world all the way down to um, China Malaysia Canada I've never been in Canada and I was having you know people buy my CDs and I, it was fantastic because I think the I don't know, I'm sure it's the same with you, but the most important thing for us as performer is to sh be able to share our art, mm -hmm. you know, our passion, because I think that's why we have this talent, is not to keep it for ourselves, is no. to to give it to others. And yeah. uh, and so that was a fantastic tool for doing yeah, it. I love recording because I love documenting. It's very hard, let's be clear. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because you know it's gonna stay there for forever and it's like oh my gosh yeah. so you need you want to be perfect or as much as good as you know as you can but it's beautiful yeah yeah but it is also a documentation yeah of where of where we are at that time mm -hmm. you know and we because we're always growing we're always moving and and i suppose it is also a part of the legacy of music when we document our voice, I, I make it a point to make an album every single year. Bravo. Yeah. Wow. Because I just think it's really, I think it's really, really important to get some form of documentation of my voice out every, every year. Um, cause who knows, you know, you know, like now when we, when we can't, you know, have that of, of being live, then yeah. as you say it's a it's a place where people can refer to and listen to your wonderful playing you know oh wonderful. <laughs> but, um, in terms of recording do you record all around the world or have you do you record mainly in studios or do you record at home it depends no at home it's impossible uh it's mm -hmm. in the recording studio or in the concert hall normally so you need to have a, a fantastic piano uh, <laughs> available mm -hmm. and then a proper, a proper microphones so it's yeah. like with voice it's very hard to capture all the waves of the the voice and the same is with the piano mm -hmm. and I have an uncle a dear uncle uh, that I always give my CD of course to the family uh, it's a Christmas <laughs> gift <laughs> and um, my uncle once he complains like Stefania every time I have to either put the volume super low or I have to put the volume super high you have too much you know uh, range between the pianissimo and the fortissimo yeah. and, and and so it's like can you please you know contain it it's like about uh, you know zio in italian uncle it's zio mm -hmm. zio this is the most important quality you know to be able to have such a wide range and so with the cd to be able to capture this range without going into distortion uh, mm -hmm. you need to have professionals so absolutely yes yes so tell me what is life like as a pianist? I mean, <laughs> I mean, how did you start as a pianist? What was, where did the love come from? Um, I always wanted to be a pianist. I remember, you know, I was maybe three or four and I would put boxes. Um, my parents had boxes for, at the time you would go and have wine in boxes. Uh -huh. The bottle of wine. So I would put the bottle, of the, the the boxes, the empty boxes, in the shape of a grand piano. So my dad, my dad is a musician, but he's a jazz musician, and we had an upright piano. I still remember it today. It was a beautiful black upright called Reynolds. I mean, it's a brand that uh, I've never seen. But I had this piano, and um, and I didn't want that one. I wanted the grand piano. Yeah already from that time and and so yeah so I started super early and I knew from the beginning well you know how it is in life uh there is so many other opportunities that come along for example I was good at writing I was good at uh, um acting I I had different opportunities but piano was always the main one mm -hmm. and um <clears throat> it's something that I think can touch with such a power, can touch inside people. And the only music, it's something that only music can do. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 
it's really interesting that you said you could do acting, you could do writing, you're a pianist. I mean, obviously you're recording us, your radio presenter now. Like, we're talking about the subject, your subject here, which is diversity, yeah. musician at 360 degrees. I mean, that is a part of that, isn't it? Absolutely. So basically, um, the, the, the thing that it's more at my, you know, uh, at the core of my... Um, live philosophy is to diversify and to be able to be musician at 360 degrees in the sense that the music is not just performing on stage yeah. is recording is writing about it is talking about it yeah. like it could be on the radio program could be on a newspaper column could be on a blog it could be anywhere but yeah. you know there is so many aspects of music that is not just the performance and uh, i think only a musician like us a professional musician can do um at, at the can give it the justice that it deserves. Yeah. So um, um, what I always tell people is, you know, not to be afraid to try to take new um, challenges yeah. and and go for it. So what happened, as I was telling you, uh, this friend of mine, he asked me to record the first album. Yeah. And then while the album was being recorded, he actually said, you know, I'm too busy with my jazz label. I cannot have a classical label. Yeah. So I had, to launch my classical label. So that's how it started. So Masterco Records started because I had no other choice. And then I grew. And so I've been a member of the Recording Academy for the Grammys, a member for the Brit Awards. Mm -hmm. So things developed from there. And, um, and it's a fantastic opportunity to make other artists to record and to understand the importance of recording and give them the platform that they deserve. Yes. And then the same happened with my uh, music academy. So I also have a music academy. So, so I'm a uh, pianist, concert pianist, recording artist, entrepreneur. I'm a teacher. I'm a, so there is so many aspects. And now a radio presenter. I've yeah. been a journalist. I remember I was uh, a university and I wanted to go to concerts for free. <laughs> <laughs> So I started sending in to the major newspaper um, in my city in Italy uh, reviews of all the concerts I was going to, hoping that they would offer me a job as a music critic. Yes. And then one day they phoned me up and they said, look, stop it, because we have our music critics, so we're not going to publish your critics, mm -hmm. but we like the way you write, so why don't you write for us uh, for politics? And so I started writing for politics, and my, artic my first article was in first page. Wow! It was, you know, I was the young uh, journalist who had no clue what was uh, dangerous or not dangerous. So I went down to tell the truth because I believe the journalism, the, the, the job of the journalist is to describe the truth. Yeah. And uh, and it went down. It was a huge scandal. It went down first page, and then I went on and being always first second page. It was it was quite fun, I have to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it gave me the tools, you know, then to take care of mm -hmm. um, uh, to be to know when to write articles mm -hmm. for music as well. Mm -hmm. you, you have some numbers of um, uh, letters that you have to use, uh, you know, there is very strict yeah. things to it. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it's very different aspect of me as a musician that I was able to direct mm -hmm. really at 360 degrees so so you're and you're also a lawyer aren't you yeah <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> yes well you know uh, I had uh, I finished early the conservatoire and yeah. um, I was already doing my concert academy so yeah. it was a master in concertism and uh, I didn't have to go to school let's say every day it was just uh, once per month and I was doing concerts and everything and so I had all the time uh, I wanted. And so I thought, let's learn something else that I love. And that was uh, law. And I think there is nothing more beautiful than to know justice and to be able to help people to defend themselves if necessary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually, so when I had to do the master in law, I did a specific master's in uh, the right of the musician. 
Wow. So all the, yes, the contracts for the agent contracts, the performance contracts, the um, recording copyrights, everything. Wow. And at the time when I did it, uh, there was not much um, legislation specific in music because mm. musicians never thought about themselves as uh, workers. Mm. And so the people that they were writing about it, they were jurists, so mm. Mm, theoretical um, lawyers, mm. um, that they only knew the theory and they were actually saying, for example, that uh, the right of the performer wasn't the same as the right of the composer. Oh, wow. So you should pay the, the performer as a normal factory worker who's reproducing the opera made the, by the engineer. Wow. I was like, yes, of course, the CD made by Pavarotti doesn't sell the same as the CD made by <laughs> who yeah. knows who, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, so I had to and still today we are in 2020. It happened to me to have friends, musicians that they come and they are offered contracts that they are not fair yeah. and, and they have no, no idea, you know, and they are also sometimes scared of doing it. Yeah. So, because they think it's more important to sign that contract with that famous, um, and then let's not go too much into details. Because <laughs> no, no, because no, but I want to say that I really identify with that, especially um, when I was first starting out, because yeah. I think it was as an artist, I didn't, I couldn't see my value. I just wanted to sing, yeah, you know. Um, but, you know, and it's it wasn't until somebody said, Nadine, you're not being paid for being on stage. Yeah. You're being paid for all the work that you did before you get Absolutely. on stage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And because sometimes it can, I can be working on a role for a whole year. And even when I do get on stage to do the role, I'm still going to be working on the role for the next time that I do it. Absolutely. And so, um, but when I was, when somebody said that to me, I was like, oh, it never even occurred to me. Yeah, Stephanie. yeah, absolutely. It never even occurred to me. Well, the, the problem is, I mean, I can see it because I'm an entrepreneur, I'm at the head of the record label and I'm at the head of a music academy as well. There is other costs that they factor in. So there is yeah. music in particular is such a complex business. So yeah. sometimes it's, mm. it's hard to be able to balance everything. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. But there is still some, uh, you know, measures where you are not supposed to, you know, still the musician, the performer in that case is the one who deserve to have as much protection as possible because it's the one that is actually bringing uh, the business to life yeah. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. So, I mean, there is so many aspects of music and uh, so many times we are just... Uh, um, I've seen it with all my friends and colleagues. Um, you know, you are um, um, developed as a musician, mm. but not as a everything mm -hmm. else. Yeah. <laughs> Just as a performer on stage, but yeah. not for before or after or everything else. So, yes, I mean, I'm very lucky in the fact that I um, I used to work in merchant banking before yeah. I came into music, and so when I came into music, I had a completely different way of looking at it um, and I can hear that you are kind of the same you have all these different pockets you're mm -hmm. like what you say the 360 degrees so you're always thinking about the other things when you're not just thinking about yourself as the artist you're thinking about what you can offer the theatre or the concert or the audience or mm -hmm. you know, it's a whole a whole round thought process absolutely yeah, yeah. It, it's not easy let's say that no 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 no, no. <laughs> But it's cha it's challenging, but that challenge is also what makes us great, really great performers, mm -hmm. um, because it's the same way that we would really research into our character. We're looking at the well-being of everybody around us. Absolutely, our, our outside workers, outside work as well. Wow, that's you're fascinating. It's <laughs> yeah, it's just I mean I can talk to you forever. <laughs> but, um, what kind of so? With your entrepreneurial skills, um, mm -hmm. what would you kind of give us like, you know, three tips into being this musician, this 360 degree for other people that, good morning, Stephen, how are you? Um, what would you give for the, 
you know, say to other musicians. And if anybody's got any questions, please, please, please put them in if you want. We're more than happy to answer any. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, musician at 360 degrees. Absolutely. But for sure not to be afraid to yeah. try something new ever. Yeah. Yeah. Secondary, anything you try to do, try to do it at the maximum of your skill and try to learn eventually new skills. Those are all important and they all come together. Mm. And the third, do it with passion and do it with love because that's the most important thing. Um, I just had a fantastic interview uh, at the women's radio station with the Korean uh, artist, harpist, pianist, composer, violinist. It was just, she was doing everything. Mm. And she said something I never thought about. And this the, um, so I give credit to her, Cheryl Kim. Yeah. Um, that uh, she was saying everybody knows the uh, tale of the hare and the turtle yeah. where the hare has the talent but is too lazy and so yeah. she's sleeping on it and so the turtle who doesn't have as much talent she's not yeah. as fast as the um, hare still uh, work hard and so she managed to win over the hare but if you don't do it with love the talent or the work won't bring you as far mm -hmm. as if you were doing it with love. So that's the, the best, yeah. uh, you know, tip for anything. Mm -hmm. And so in me particular, as a musician, I love music. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. I love it all also. I don't just love um, the piano music. I love opera. I love um, hip hop. I love rock. You know, going to the Grammys is so much fun because you get to see all these other styles, you know, and uh, and everybody's so passionate about their 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 field, yeah. uh, but they're also open to everything else. So be absolutely open to yeah. anything that life will bring you because uh, it's for sure for good. Yes, yes. And um, I was I was going to ask you a question there because something came up. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I just I it just it just it just came it just came to me. But now it just it's gone again. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Sometimes um, when you talk too much. <laughs> no, no. I love it. I love it. I mean, I think I'd really it would be great to talk to you in a really technical way, but mm. you know, not today. But it would be quite fascinating. Um. Uh. So where can we find you? Mm hmm. Um, anywhere really. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a we, so we've got you on the women's radio station that anybody yeah. can look, look mm -hmm. up. I have, then... my, I have my YouTube channel um, oh. that is uh, with all the recordings, the albums that I've done, uh, concert yeah. performances that I've done. Yeah. And, uh, and then of course I'm everywhere I saw on Instagram, Facebook, uh, mm. and uh, you can reach me through that so yeah. actually for the um both as a performer you know for collaboration recordings yeah. for my record yeah. label i'm more than happy i have a music academy so i we want to have new students to come it's open to uh, students of any age and level we actually have the summer masterclass coming up in july we don't know if we will do it but i have requests from canada don't know if they think they can travel from Canada <laughs> in July already. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, you never know. So let's. That's let's what I was going to ask you, Stefania, just because yeah. you're such a multifaceted woman. Um, Stephen's just saying, Stephen John Svenholm is just saying, wonderful open mindedness, so important in life. Totally Absolutely. agree, Stephen. Um, when, when you're thinking about artists in this time, of the different ways that we have to develop and be, um, where do you think that's going to end up? Have you got any thoughts around that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think this is an incredible time to be a musician right now. Uh, it's good and bad, of course. It's bad because we can't be on stage. We can't play together. It's, mm. it's super hard. But at the same time, uh, it's in the hard uh, moments that our creativity gets the most of its inspiration, isn't it? Mm. And so there is all this new way and we are so lucky we have technology. We are in 2020 and non-1920. And so technology is improving. So it's actually a super creative moment. And I think the most amazing things will come out of of this uh, situation of this lockdown. Yes. So yes. I'm very, very positive. It's great to hear another artist that is really positive because I'm really positive about this time mm -hmm. as well. Um, and just, I have become, like yourself, really loads more creative. And I'm even writing a pop tune. 
Oh, wonderful. But we'll hold that thought to we'll see. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I, I work with my dad. I told you he's a jazz musician. Yes. And uh, he started, since my wedding, he decided to hire a big band. Yeah. And the big band, he, you know, he wanted to have one piece to perform, then two pieces, then three pieces. Then the big band complains, excuse me, you're basically having the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of being the father of the bride, you're taking over the stage. And so my dad says, okay, fine. I'm not going to play with you. But he hired them. So we had them on the wedding. And then he made his own band. So we had two stage because they couldn't share the stage. So we had two big band stage. You can't imagine. And, uh, and now he has a big band, a funk big band. Oh, wow. So we produce um, his uh, original song, which is just coming out with an album with um, uh, covers, super fun. Mm -hmm. And so I helped him with the words for his songs and composition. So we're not far from each other, you know. No. <laughs> it's not pop. I, I'm not doing pop, but you know. Yeah, why not? Because we can, can't we? Absolutely. Well, it's music, isn't it? Why yeah, not? It's music, absolutely. And oh, so get, go ahead. And anything you know that inspires us to do even better with classical, in particular, you know, yeah. you can I was, I always um, put in reference Mozart with all his tricks uh, mm -hmm. and in his sonatas and Bach, in Beethoven. All these people, they were not just living no. for classical music; they had incredible lives. Yes. Outside it. And that was made their composition to be yes. those incredible. Sometimes you have to be down to heart to be able to then uh, yes. write something that is all the way up to the sky. Yeah, it's how we're influenced, isn't it? Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. So I've been, been asked by everybody this week, um, am I coaching? So I'm just going to let everybody know every Friday I've been told, because I keep getting asked this question, yes, I am coaching. I am seeing people on individual basis. If you'd want to uh, avail of my coaching, you can catch me on the deanbenjamin.com or everybodycan.com. Please feel free, please feel free to get in contact and I'll see how I can serve you because I would love to serve you. And before we go, Stefania, do you have any final thoughts for us? Well, if you can, play music, play music, listen to music, because music is something that can make our days more bright, yeah. that can make the sun shine even if the sky is grey and, uh, you know, and um, help us with anything, with any job we're doing, you know, yes. music, music, music. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to have you on the show, Stefania. You're, thank you. you're a great light and a great mastermind in our world of music at the moment. I love your entrepreneurship. I love how dedicated, focused and innovative you are as a human being, as a woman, as a mother, as a musician, as all the things that you are. And I really, really celebrate you today. Thank you so much for joining well, us. Thank you for inviting me. You've been fantastic. Thank oh, you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. And thank you all for being here. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>